the million dollar scam that created this rapper's career let's see who the fuck this rapper is nigga i've never heard of this rapper chad focus is a rapper with hundreds of millions of streams on his songs performances with artists like lil baby a song with T-Pain, and billboards that claim he is the number one recording artist in the world. And yet with all of this, you have probably never heard of him. Never. That's because every aspect of Chad's career is fake. From his streams and his followers to his ticket sales and possibly even his billboard record. And he was able to do all of this because of a multi-million dollar scam that landed him in prison for two and a half years. But first, how does, how does a multi, I mean, damn, W Laura, because what the fuck, a multi-million dollar scam. And you only got two years, bro? If I would have done it, I would have gotten 150. Chad had to get some money. Chad Focus, whose real name is Chad Arrington, is someone who has been involved in a lot of shady business and fraudulent things throughout his time on the internet. At first, Chad started out as an ambitious hustler, just trying to figure out ways to make money online. Chad was so ambitious that he fell for a multi-level marketing scheme called MOB that he promoted a bunch on his YouTube channel. All you gotta do is continue to go through the program, take action, and continue to stay positive. Oh my God, nigga, you are... <laughs> You are <laughs> damn. They hit you with the forex, my nigga. They hit you with one of those. I remember, bro. Some nigga, bro, back in like 2020, bro. Back in the bad times, the cuckoo times, bro. This nigga here, bro. Shout out to him, bro. I don't know his name, but shout out to him, bro. He's he's, he's cool. Like I I don't fuck with him no more because I was getting scammed, but he's he he was getting to the bad, but he was chasing that shit. This nigga hit me up on instagram right obviously the forex stuff and shit like that and my young what was that four years ago my young 17 year old self bro i was like you know what let's do it but this is how stupid i am right this nigga was he's giving me the pyramid scheme he's giving me the game plan and everything and then he asked me right and i think this is what kind of pissed him off like because my question was so stupid. Then again, nigga, I'm 17. Oh, fuck. I'm 17, right? What the fuck do you expect out of me, bro? I'm 17 years old. So this nigga asked me, like, so how much money you... Because he was trying to convince me. So this was like his last his last flamethrower. He was like, so how much you would want to make uh, doing this Forex stuff? I said, nigga, like 10000 The nigga hung up, bro. <laughs> yo i said 10 i was dead serious though because i'm like bro if i'm because i was working at chipotle at the time i'm like give me at least five to ten thousand if this shit could get me guaranteed five to ten thousand i'll send you the money right now nigga we could get locked in together we could build this fucking thing we could flourish our empires will grow we as a community yap 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 nigga yes give me that five to ten thousand though Nigga still quiet for like six seconds, hung up the phone. I said, before I even said hello, he hung up. I was like, hello, boop, that's it, bro. And he never spoke to me again. But I mean, where are the Forex niggas now? Feel me? Like, that shit is fucking hilarious, bro. They really had it. They, they had this nigga, though. They had this nigga with the Forex. The background, the, the, the. The, the the fucking perfect skin the haircut the chain oh my gosh you can just tell take action and continue to stay positive that dream car is right around the corner for you come to find oh out that mo was God. actually shut down by the ftc just a year later i also found another video of him promoting another company called motor club of america this has got to be one of the best opportunities i've ever seen you know um there's no scam here at all guys they do pay you every Why the fuck do you niggas? Oh my god, this shit amazing. Bro, here, here this, this is my one thing, right? Why are you promoting a scam? And then say, guys, this is not a scam. And you know what's the worst part? Niggas still fall for the fact that it's still a scam. So it's like, guys, this scam that I'm posting, it's not a scam, I promise. And we as fucking idiots just, okay. Like, come on, bro. Every single Friday, guys. Now, I don't know anything about this company, but according to the Better Business Bureau, they aren't great. And he shilled for them pretty hard if you take a look at his old channel. Oh, and on top of that, he was also supporting something called Organo Gold, which seemed like another MLM or something of that nature. But in 2011, when he was 23 years old, Chad decided to get a real job at a company called Agora Publishing, a Baltimore media firm. At this company, he worked as an SEO specialist. 
which stands for search engine optimization. This is a pretty That's common smart. marketing That's smart. thing. It's basically where people try to get your uh, page or whatever it is to appear at the top of Google results or YouTube or whatever else it is. He graduated from college with a degree in communications and used his knowledge of marketing to his advantage. He attempted many of his own business ventures throughout his career including an IT company and a SEO consulting firm. He has claimed in an interview that through all of his early ventures, he became a millionaire in his 20s. But like I've said before, a person's actions indicate their success much better than their words. And Chad's actions would prove that he wasn't very honest. In 2015, while still working at Agora Publishing, Chad decided to enter a new field and launched his own business called Focus Music Entertainment, along with his music career under the name Chad Focus. And instead of going the traditional route of grinding out music in the underground, he decided to fake everything, which makes sense because his music wasn't really good. Everywhere they go, you know they know the kid. I've been up, I've been down, but I never snitched. You know Vice it, had him? Oh, you niggas is stupid, bro. Vice, you been on some shit. I'm so fucking happy y'all niggas failed as a fucking YouTube shit. Whatever the fuck y'all niggas are. Media company? I'm so fucking happy y'all niggas failed, bro. You had this goofy ass nigga making music. Do you not hear what he's making? Nigga, Vice had everybody, though. I ain't gonna lie. Vice had everybody, bro. Had everybody. Damn, that nigga sucks. That chain is faking in my fucking... Bonnet, bro. He also didn't seem to be as good at marketing as he claimed to be. At least I don't think he was. I, I'm not sure. It's just a hunch. I don't really have any evidence for that one. So Chad decided to bot everything from his followers to his streams using a method called streaming farms so that he could actually get paid from his streams. Michael K. Williams made a Vice documentary on him discussing the subject, which I actually covered in a previous video where Chad explained his methods. Streaming farm, man, is a bunch of different cell phones that sign up to Spotify. They play your record over and over again. You get streams, you get paid. You know, plain and simple. Being able to use my streaming platforms, man, I was able to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. We were able to chart on Billboard. We were able to chart on Spotify. We were able to chart on Apple Music title, Shazam. Stream farms are essentially a bunch- First of all, why do you have a, what's that, a G-Shock watch? Nigga had a G-Shock watch with a fucking iced out chains. I ain't never seen that in my life. Phones set up with real people or bots repeatedly pressing play on songs so that they get streams that are technically real. It's a pretty common thing and people in the industry are very familiar with it. In the Vice documentary I mentioned- Shit, Michael let me Williams find out, nigga. I'm about to help my mans Dylan out. Nigga, only way you can fake it till you make it, right? I'm about to help my mans out, bro. Let me find out, bro. He actually makes good music too. I feel like the niggas who are making good music should abuse this shit. Not the niggas who suck. Like Mr. Chad Focus. Never heard of him a day in my life, bro. Like. Even interviewed one of the people who ran a stream farm. A recording artist come to you and pay you to sit here and stream their music to run the numbers up. Yep. Yeah, just uh, basically just run the numbers up. Some people ask for 100k, 200k. Why do you have a scheme ass gang? I mean, this is like what? Fraud? Tenant? But like I said, I did an entire video on Makes the prevalence sense. of bots in the music industry. So feel free to check that out after this one. So this is the method Chad went with. Paying for stream farms and fake followers. But rather than using his own money, he decided to spend money on the Agora Publishing Company credit card. He spent over $300,000 on Fiverr, paying people who promised they would promote his music on, on Fiverr? Oh my gosh. This nigga is sick. On Fiverr? Yo, them niggas made money, bro. The niggas on Fiverr made money. How the fuck do you spend 300k on Fiverr, bro? Niggas in Fiverr. Yo, whoever whoever got paid from that nigga Chad, bro, that nigga was having a field day, boy. He also was working with a company wow. that he paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for them to fake his YouTube views, his Spotify streams, and his Instagram followers. He also purchased things like sound equipment, studio kits, instruments, music technology, and more. With this fake fame, Chad was able to do a few things, like chart on Billboard in 2018 with the song Dance With Me. And he also had a remix with T-Pain, although he probably paid for that feature on the company credit card. To be honest though, I don't think he really did a good job, as everything was so obviously botted. I guess he didn't think things would look suspicious if one song has millions of plays and another has like 10, with the like ratios being non-existent. Existent. Seven or complex or DJ academics or say cheese if he got a guy like me because I can use bots to make Sean an authority for whatever content he's posting on the internet. 
It seems he severely misunderstood people's perceptions of bots in the music industry, and eventually his Spotify account was removed. And not only was he faking Damn. his streams and his followers, Free my nigga he faked his ticket sales as well. In 2019, he performed at a show with Lil Baby and Moneybag Yo. And to make the show look more poppin' as well as make some extra money, Chad decided to scalp his own concert tickets. Again, he spent another 125000 on the company credit card to buy tickets to the show. Bro, 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 bro. Alright, alright, nigga, alright, nigga. Hey, this 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 this, this what this what upsets me right this is what's upsetting me right now right you spend money on you spend the company's money on fake tickets to your own concerts to make money it's the stupidest shit ever i've ever heard in my life bro i need to know how much he made from that fucking little baby shit Cause if you had little baby in your concert, bro, my bad chat, my neck hurts. If you had little baby in your shit, bro, and you were performing with little baby and anybody else, how much money did you make? Like two hundred? What's his profit from spending one hundred twenty-five k? What was your profit? Had to be above a hundred thousand, minimum, bro. Like minimum. And then he tried to resell all of the tickets. He did all of this. Oh, that's smart. That's that smart. He was just doing what everyone else in the industry does. So that was the conversation on Vice TV is what happens when an artist figures out the same process as Live Nation and does it himself independently. It's also another reason that the industry is scared of shit of Chad Focus because these are the conversations that we have on this platform. Now, of course, there are some shady things in the music industry, but Chad was acting as if what he was doing wasn't shady either. <laughs> He was and trying to justify it. That's the worst. He was trying to justify it. As well. According to the Department of Justice, he spent over $300,000 for unauthorized international and national travel expenses, hotels, airfares, nightlife, and other miscellaneous expenses. He also spent another $375,000 in unauthorized purchases for Chad Focus merchandise and accessories. He was even spending a ton of money on giant billboards to promote himself and his music. And sometimes he would put up entirely stupid billboards like one that read, who will be the president of 2024? But things were going well for Chad. He had his fake fame, his fake followers, and his fake streams, which actually probably made him some real money. But then he got caught. Chad had been working with some Goofy of his friends ass. to help conceal his activities. He would make purchases from companies and accounts owned by his friends who would launder the money back to him. And to hide this even further, he had some other friends use computer software to make false entries on the credit card billing statements in order to conceal the recipient of the payments from Arrington's supervisor. Chad claims, though, that after the concert with a little baby in 2019, the government started looking into him. He was eventually indicted in mid-2019, pled guilty in early 2020, and was sentenced to two and a half years in federal prison in 2021. The charges on the company credit card totaled over $4.1 million, and he was charged with conspiracy, wire fraud, and aggravated identity theft. Jesus At the time Christ. of the hearing, he said he was humiliated by national public attention on his case and his attorney said that his actions were in part fueled by amphetamine use and undiagnosed mental nigga, illness. Nigga, this nigga, I know, bro. This, <laughs> his lawyer really said, yo, we're going to pull, we're going to do, we're going to pull the mental illness trick and drug use. And we're going to get you two and a half years. You okay with that? Nigga, say less. Like, I, I swear to God, that's how the conversation went, bro. Nigga came into him like, all right, so it looks like you're looking like 15 to life. And that's like, what else can we do about that? Uh, we could do the, uh, well, we have two options. Uh, number one, you do the 15 to, you know, to life. And, or you could do the mental illness and drug use, even though you've not, you're not dumb or stupid at all, have no mental illnesses, and you've never taken a drug besides the uh, ganja. He's like, let's do that. I swear to God, his lawyer got paid big money. So you, I wonder, what's, what was his net worth? Like, you were a scammer. So what was your net worth after this? Like, before you even got arrested, what was his net worth, bro? No way his net worth. Well, then again, I can't research his net worth because he probably scammed about his net worth, bro. He probably faked his net worth. This nigga, wow. Ten employers from his Jesus company Christ. had to take pay cuts because of what he did. However, oh, wow. if you've ever heard of Chad Focus or maybe seen some clips in this video, Never. you may think that he was outsmarting the system or trying to teach people how to get rich. No. But this is just another one of Chad's scams. Scalpers like Chad can be extremely annoying because no one should be paying triple or double what the original ticket price is for a little baby concert. So that's why today's video... Oh, uh, nigga trying to get me. Look at you.
In 2023, Chad was released from prison, and that's when he began his press run from home because he also had a year of house arrest. After getting out of prison, Chad needed to make some money desperately, which is because he was actually ordered by the court to pay back the over $4.1 million he stole. If you listen to any of his interviews, Chad Focus acts as if what he did was some sort of noble thing. He claims that all of this was to inspire and teach people how to get money. And so what my job to do was, Sean, was kind of like expose the industry for what it is, bro. For somebody like myself, I did have a huge budget and I did everything that you could do as far as a major artist, but I did it independently. But he didn't expose much that wasn't already known. Bots have been around forever. And what? independent is a strong word to use when you have $4 million on a company credit card at your disposal. Chad mixed truth with lies because the music industry definitely does have a bot problem, along with ticket sites having issues as well. But when he claims that Spotify banned him not because he was botting his songs, but because he was an independent artist botting his songs, it seems like he's kind of bending the truth. And a lot of people seem to have fallen for this, with one person saying, dude is probably a lot richer than everyone laughing at him doing better than ever now and legit which just isn't true people think this because after nah, he's got legit caught, broke <laughs> he's i don't know how a nigga like him could sleep bro like you have to pay off this money and then you're gonna and then you're still like that whole process of him even trying to become a famous rapper was i know that shit was stressful bro like nigga was probably i think the most he probably ever made by himself off money bro was probably like a hundred thousand bro there's no way I see that nigga pass like 200,000, maybe 100,000. And then he has to pay off the 100,000 plus tax. Nigga probably made like maybe 45K the maximum, bro. Probably how he got those chains. Yes, I'm pocket watching because the nigga's a fucking idiot. Like. He tried to do this whole press run and put on this bravado as if he was doing something for his community. So I went and I took a completely different angle. I tried to master IT, I tried to master technology. You know, a young black guy figuring out the way. That all the major labels, man, touch the real money, so I could empower my people and make sure I could give them back. On that's a fucking lie. <laughs> that's a fucking lie, bro. Like, wow. You can really see the bullshit in his face, bro. You can see the cap. You can see the cap. I gotta read that book, uh, the Forty Eight Laws of Power, bro. I feel like any any scammer nigga kind of knows how to really like get people because they read that book. And I don't want to be a scammer, but it's like. Everybody, every fucking, I don't want to say every famous person, but every important or significant person who makes actual money reads that book. So why not read it? You know, but I'm going to take it baby steps, bro. I'm going to read other stuff, too. I don't think I'm ready for the 48 laws of power, bro. I don't want to become like a cynical liar. I'm already a liar. Like I like, I used to lie a lot in high school chat. I used to lie bad. Bro. I used to lie about everything, bro. I used to lie about juice being in this fucking cup. Oh, is there juice in this cup? Yeah, no fucking juice in this cup. It's been like this for three days. Like, I be lying, bro. I used to lie. Now I don't lie because, you know, I've been, I got closer with God. But sometimes, bro, you need to take over as a man, bro. I feel like a bitch. He wasn't this nigga making money. This nigga making money scamming. This is the shit that, this is the shit that gets me mad, right? All these fucking idiot delinquent thugs, scammers, drug dealers, rappers, they all get away with it, in a sense, at first, right? But if I were to do it today, nigga, let's say I start selling weed right now at the corner of my block right now, nigga. I start selling weed right now, bro. Promise you six hours later, I'm gonna get arrested and sentenced for 15 years. Promise you that, bro. But there's a nigga right there across the street who's been doing it his whole fucking life. But the moment I do it, <laughs> gone, bro. Poof. Besides himself, bro, it's not fair. But how is Chad Focus gonna make back that four million dollars? How is he gonna get it? How well, is he? Well, the whole time that Chad was trying to get some status in the music industry, he was also selling the idea of status to others. He had things like giant billboards that said. I will teach you how to be rich, along with his social media. Once you checked out his social media, you're met with an Instagram bio that says, do you want to be rich or famous or both? I can make you viral. Book me. Click the link below. Well, he is taking the smart route. That's actually pretty smart because he's going to scam you out of some uh, money. And he's probably going to tell you the same shit that he's done for his old fucking, you know, when he used to promote his old companies and other trades and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> When reality is literally bots. Damn, bro. I don't want to use bots, but it's like bots work. 
But this will lead you to his website. If you go to his website, you'll be met with a page that says, get thousands of true fans, millions of music streams, get paid and grow your career and business as a music artist. Right off the bat, he's lying about the true fans thing, but there's more. He offers an online course with a tried and proven system of growing your fan base, getting millions of monthly music streams, get paid and launch a rewarding career and business, which is again ironic because he's known for botting everything. He also offers marketing and promotions, but the most interesting offer in my opinion Opinion is the coaching programs. Right now, you can book an exclusive one on one hour long consultation for $250, bro. Like, you think I'm gonna sit here? First of all, that that fucking glasses and says focus, nigga, that shit is not fucking, that's not marketing at all, bro. I would think that you're a scammer from the jump for $250. And look how many people's falling for that, bro. That's 250 times one, times two, times three, times four, times five, times six, times seven, times eight, times nine, times 10, times 11. Hey Siri, what's 250 times 11? $2,750 he just made, bro. In a month. In 11, technically in 11 days, he's made $2,750. And I'm over here broke. Of $250. The description reads, do you want to be rich or famous or both? My goal is to help a select group of artists, creators, and entrepreneurs use the same focus formula that helps me drive traffic, go viral, and turn influence into money. Yes, I got the number one streaming network. Yes, I help you get paid royalties. Yes, I do paid ads and influencer marketing. Yes, I can get you on radio, TV, and billboards. Yes, I build websites and Shopify stores. Yes, I build apps and bots. Come see a behind the scenes look at my system and sales funnel I use to cash out. I'll show you the exact formula I use to make $10,000 per month. You also also get a copy of his book for free. He actually has two books, one of which I tried buying, but it's fake is oh fuck 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 what am I doing? Fuck fake is chains in the galaxy. Y'all seen that shit? Y'all seen that shit? Side. But what I'm getting at here is he is selling this dream of being rich famous and successful while well, the entire time he is lying about his success like Word. when he made the claim yes i got the number one streaming network what does that even mean obviously he has admitted that he uses bots but he heavily exaggerates the success that he saw from that and entirely ignores the fact that he stole 4.1 million dollars and has to pay it back instead of mentioning this he just points out the fact that he was sent to prison as if the music industry had it out for him after he exposed them and if it wasn't already obvious that this guy is capable of just making up wild claims, listen to him talk about how viral he is. Chance focus is huge right now, bro, because I do extremely, you know, viral content, man. My interviews are, are, are lit, but people take those reels and they share them, bro. So like my stuff from like Vice TV, for people to share all of that content, bro, and for us to have a number one documentary on that platform. Uh Vice is non-existent in 2024, and I've never heard of Chad Focus a day in my life. You don't even look like a rapper, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. Chad Focus is probably like I see you as like a dude who you 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 you're the dude who knows the dude who's famous. So you're the friend of a friend, nigga. I would think Chad Focus is a friend of a friend, like an associate, not even a business partner or, or a producer. You know, it's just a blessing. This was after he was let out of prison, so everyone already knows how not viral he was. And on top of that, his Vice documentary, that wasn't even about him, it was more so about bots, is far from the biggest one on their page. He almost seemed delusional as if he had convinced himself that he was some sort of super talented musician ready to blow with tons of fans. I can go down the days that I was on Power 105 and your Hot 97s. So all of this is happening, bro, and everybody acting like they're not paying attention. But yeah. if I'd assigned to an Empire, Sean, or Interscope, or, or Atlantic, it would have been a lot more- I wonder if these fucking idiots believe what the fuck he's saying, bro. I don't like their faces. They look very convinced. I would have looked at him like, what the fuck are you talking about? Around my movement as if it was like a Cardi B or your A Boogies or those guys. So it really was for me to show like, yo, look, if you're an independent artist, it's a ceiling. It's a ceiling that you got no matter what your budget looks like or your skill set or how many resources you got, bro. And that's just how the industry works.
Like I said, he even had a billboard in which he claimed he was the number one artist in the world. But clearly, Chad isn't that rich and successful if he's out here selling courses and a $275 consultation. If you really are successful, you either have much more to show for when offering a course, or you aren't selling one at all. Chad didn't buy those chains because of money he made from rapping. He bought them with the company credit card. Chad tends to portray Jesus himself as a good Christ. guy who just wants to help out the community. But judging by all of his actions, it seems like he only wants to help himself. Why don't you sell the chains, niggas? You could pay off your shit. I mean, he's too fucking stupid to do that. Well, to be entirely fair, I have seen him post about raising money for breast cancer, which I do think is really cool. But it's hard to believe someone who is constantly lying for money. So if there's anything to be learned from this video, it's to make sure you don't believe everything off the internet. 100%. Because not everyone is as big as they seem. 100 percent and obviously don't you ever in my life come to me and talk about chad focus i will literally block you i will block you if i get a phone call from my brother and he's like yo bro you heard that new chad focus he's little i'm bro, he's i'm sending him to fucking antarctica he's going to perish from existence